Happy Wednesday to you. I hope you're enjoying these summer days, these nice, warm, sunny days that we're having. Yes, they are. <laughs> we're going to uh, pick up in Psalms today and finish out. This is the last yeah. one uh, of Psalm. Um, but remember, we're going to keep doing this uh, through the summer. And uh, if we'd love to hear your suggestions of what you'd like us to study next. As we mentioned Monday, summer is kind of short Mm -hmm. books of the bible series mm -hmm. uh so we're happy to hear from you of what you'd like us to study and and we have really enjoyed this whole process so when we talk about orientation disorientation and reorientation um whatever whenever the church fully comes back online when we're on the other side of this i'm not so sure we wouldn't keep doing this yeah. because it allows yeah. people to engage with us who uh who have work schedules and other ways. Mm -hmm. um, so we really do like doing this. So let us know how we can make it better and what you'd like us to study next. Well, and it occurred to me, Dan, what we should have done when we started this was had not only the camera that's videoing us, but the camera in the very back videoing the whole set so they could see the yeah. actual disorientation well, to reorientation right. as that's we've right. been through this and process. And maybe in a couple of years, we won't have to be six feet away from each other. <laughs> right. But uh, right now, the TV and the table and everything works. <laughs> and oh. when, when Joyce gets back uh, fully in place as our super volunteer, she'll mm -hmm. probably make us put a couple of plants around here somewhere. Right, right. It'll be decorative. Do, do something other than a black tablecloth <laughs> and a TV screen. So, All right. All right. Let's get started out with Psalm 149. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in assembly of his faithful people. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and music to, the him, to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let his faithful people rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron, to carry out the sentence written against them, this is the glory of all his faithful people. Praise the Lord. So Psalm 149 starts out with praise like the other yeah. ending psalms and yes. many other psalms throughout. We start out praising the Lord, and it seems just a little out of place yeah. because of the way it works a little bit. Right. But um, it, it's, it's talking about God's vengeance and, and praising all at the same time. But the tone of the first four verses are really this psalm that's singing the new song, that's yep. praising God for all of the great things that he does and has done. Um, and it refers to some sort of new beginning, it right. looks like. It's not just, again, we're yep. not just the same old, same old. Just, we're yep. reoriented to something new here as we look at what God has done most mm -hmm. recently, and, and we really don't know what exactly it was right. at this point. Right. Um, but then Psalm 149, verse 4, announces two reasons that we should praise the Lord. First, the Lord takes pleasure in His people. You know, we could really praise the Lord for that today. Right. The Lord taking pleasure in His people. How many times do... Right. <laughs> we even talk about well, we, we, you know, we, we take pleasure pray, probably in, in newborns and in, in mm -hmm. small children and in precious children. Um, but something happens somewhere along the line that we stop taking pleasure in people. And sometimes it's because of their actions or their attitudes mm -hmm. or their words. Uh, sometimes, a, a lot of times when they become teenagers, <laughs> yes. they're not so pleasurable. <laughs> um, but I do think this is a big point because it, it, it speaks to a foundational theology. Mm -hmm. um, the Lord takes pleasure in his people. Why does he do that? Because he created them in his image. Yes. And we walked away from that theology for too long, and we think we're some wormy, what, what, what others mm -hmm. have called wormy theology that God just puts up with us. That's, that's not the testimony of the Bible. Right. Um, he takes, takes pleasure in his people. And we lose what salvation looks like as well, right. because whenever we're washed clean, right. 
we're clean. Right. And we don't give ourselves that grace. And, and here, when the Lord takes pleasure in his people, he takes pleasure in his people. They've been clean. They've right. been, you know, right. he created them in his image and were cleaned up in his image because of his work. And uh, you and I were talking earlier, um, we're, we're going to work on a sermon series probably towards the end of the summer uh, where we've talked about this a number of times. Um, and it's too simplistic to say it this way, but you can have a Genesis 1 theology or you can have a Genesis 3 yes, theology. And Genesis right. 1 theology <laughs> says the Lord created us in his image and we are good. Mm -hmm. And Genesis 3 is obviously about the fall and the consequences of our sin. But if that's where your theology mm -hmm. is, is based, mm -hmm. then you're, always, you're never going to view people as created in the image of God the way God does. Um, mm -hmm. Because there is good when he creates. And Genesis 1 leads us to the end of Revelation where it's good. Mm -hmm. The garden is restored. Mm -hmm. and, and right, it's a salvation issue. We don't think, we think about redemption. We don't think about restoration. Yeah, and, and it's definitely one of those glass half full, half empty views right. of life. Right, taking pleasure in his people. Then yep. in verse 4 also you see that God adorns the humble with victory. Right. Now that's something we don't normally right. think about the we humble being victorious. Yeah. We want the struggle for power. Yep. It's where success is. Right, and so I think in, in times of turmoil, within your family, within our culture, you know, we don't, we don't rush to the, to the humble folks. No. Um, but if you'll, if you'll go hang out with some humble folks, mm -hmm. that might be where you see God start breaking mm -hmm. through again. Yes. So, yes. And then over in verses five and six, we resume the call to praise that we started out in verses one and three and summon the faithful to exalt right. and to sing for joy with high praises of God in their throats. Yeah, there is something we do together. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we come to gather and worship to do that yes. together. Um, there, if we don't come to, to see if the air conditioning is at the right temperature <laughs> or, uh, or, or Randy or Alex or Dan or whatever mm -hmm. is doing the right thing, we come because there is something collectively that happens. Kind of what we were talking about on Monday with Psalm 148, mm -hmm. that this actually becomes a witness in and of itself. Yes. Um, and so we, we need to get there. But as Hans mentioned, um, this psalm goes a little off note, if you will. Yeah. Um, it sounds like all the other psalms that we're reading here towards the end of the psalm until uh, something begins to happen in verse 6 um, and 7. He talks about inflicting venge vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples and to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with shackles of iron. And, uh, and we do, don't usually put... Uh, sing our praise songs, and right after that, come up with a vengeance song. Yeah. And, um, and we don't have a really great view of vengeance in our day. Um, one commentator defined vengeance as an invocation of judgment, calamity, or curse uttered against one's enemies or the enemies of God. Um, and we think about vengeance because we've watched too many Hollywood, Hollywood yeah. movies that <laughs> I'm going to do to you worse than you did to me. Right. That's what vengeance is in our day, and it's about how we get uh, made whole or something, mm -hmm. if you will. And that's never, that never works, by the way, but it's never the idea that's in right. the Bible either. No. Um, no, there's justice in the vengeance right. that there God There's justice out. in the vengeance, and that's so important uh, to realize what the psalmist is talking about. Um, and so let me, uh, let me give us a quote. Uh, from another commentator, vengeance was an act to enforce or restore justice where the regular legal process processes were not competent or had failed. Mm -hmm. um, wow, there's a lot we could say right oh now about goodness. that. Um, yes. That's the idea of the Bible, that that's God reorienting everybody back mm -hmm. to justice mm -hmm. after a huge time of disorientation. And uh, it's often easier to see this in other places that are not our country. Yes. And we say, oh, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're getting some nature. But, but we, when you are powerless or feel powerless um, and you feel like you've lacked justice, um, right. then, yeah, when, when the regular legal processes have failed, you're looking for something else. And, mm -hmm. and I don't want to get pie in the sky with our theology, but... We, we often need to remember that, that God's justice keeps moving. Yes. Um, and it might not be visible to us right now mm -hmm. in the way that we hope, but God's mm -hmm. justice is moving, and he is going to 
experience or bring this vengeance yes. to bring his justice to people who haven't had justice. Right. And, and so be of good cheer. Right. Um, right. You know, when we see people that are struggling so much. So I think that's a powerful word out of Psalm 149, as odd as it seems that mm -hmm. it shows up here um, in this uh, in this section. Um, and as we think about being believers that are seeking justice in this world, I think it's might be the most powerful means of evangelism we have right now. If we will walk and be a people of justice and um and you don't have to look really hard in the Bible to find the theme of justice. No. That's a big deal to God. <laughs> and so if we walk alongside him, I think uh, we have a great, great opportunity to, to model a new way to sing a new song in a world that's struggling right now with the issue of justice. All right, so that's one, Psalm 149. We're going to transition to Psalm 150 now. Um, and again, and this is where the last part of Psalm 149 sounds so out of place mm -hmm. compared to the <laughs> three or four around it. Psalm 150, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, praise him for his acts of power, praise him for his surpassing greatness, praise him with the sounding of the trumpet, praise him with the harp and lyre, praise him with timbrel and dancing, praise him with the strings and pipe, praise him with the clash of cymbals, praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It must not have been Baptist. They were right. dancing in there. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of dancing and, and clashing, uh, all of that kind of stuff. And, um, and again, we are, we are so unwilling sometimes to see what the psalmist is calling us to. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm not saying that every minute of every day should be a Psalm 150 moment, but I'm concerned that many of us live our lives and never experience Psalm 150 once. Yeah. For, for, yeah. for an hour. Yeah. Um, and so, so there's something powerful here. Um, it is an extended call to praise. Um, and again, the psalmist, uh, we, we get psalms kind of not in a chronological order, so, uh, but you would like to think that if there was intention of putting this one at the end, it mm -hmm. was the intention of, folks, you need to get ready to do something you're going to do forever. <laughs> if you're going to walk with God into eternity. Um, and so we can sing this new song. We can sing with praise. Um, and so when we are dealing with sorrow and tragedy, doesn't mean we stop, but it means we keep an eye mm -hmm. on how God's calling us to praise. Um, when life is at the highest moments, sometimes, a lot of times, I think we need to remember to praise God because if we don't, we'll think we had something to do with it. Right. It's right. about us uh, being in the right place, right time, our, our brilliance or whatever. Um, and so all of that, we need to thank God. Um, and when we see God at work in the world, and this is where I think um, when we get to, to stand before God, this might be the greatest critique he gives of us, especially in American Christianity, when we're sitting around saying, well, where we lived our whole lives, and we say this maybe not as bluntly. We haven't seen God at work, and I think God's going to say, hold on here. Mm -hmm. um, do you think I just took off <laughs> some time? Um, but our job is to constantly see God at work and praise God for his work. Let everything that lives, that has breath, praise the Lord. Um, and, and that's a great way to live. And it's not a question. It's more of a command. When he says praise the Lord there starting out, you know, over and over throughout the Psalms, it's, hey, y'all, get together and yeah. praise the Lord. It's not, come on, you, yeah. can, you can do this. That's, it's a that's praise the Lord. He's not compelling us. Mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. He is saying this is a great way to do life. Why right. wouldn't you live life this way? Um, all right, so let me give us some closing questions. Um and uh, so we've done, so far since we went online, we've done the Book of Mark. Mm -hmm. And all of this you can see on our YouTube channel and our yes. Facebook channel. You can watch all of those. Now we've gone through uh, 17 sessions of the Psalms. Oh. We didn't do all of them, but we, we did 17 sessions here. Uh, do know that, that Will Carlton is in the back, and the reason you're able to see all this <laughs> stuff is because of what he does. He is yeah. our, our video sound guy. Sunday morning when we're live streaming, there are a lot of people in this room. But when we uh, when we do the video, we're we're a little. Will does it all. Will, Will does it all. And so as we uh, start to allow more folks in the building, if you'd like to help us with graphics, um, 
I'm the PowerPoint guy, and that's probably not the <laughs> best role for me. If you'd like to help us make this better or volunteer to work with us, please let us know. But let me finish with some closing questions. How can we redefine the idea of vengeance in our mm. culture so mm. that we connect it to God's justice and not to our sense of wanting to make sure this person feels as bad as I do? Right. And then how can the words of the Psalms bring healing and hope to our lives? Um, I hope you'll spend some time on both those questions. Again, give us your thoughts uh, and ideas for what's next. But thanks for being with us today. Uh, looking forward to uh, worshiping with you online uh, Sunday at 10 a.m. And again, um, you can still invite people to church. You can just send them a little email, send them a little mm -hmm. um uh, make phone call and uh, and within reason, I would encourage you to maybe invite some people over to your house. Maybe you can set this up on the back deck and and watch a worship service together. Don't don't lose track of the opportunity to invite people mm -hmm. uh, to get around God's word during this time. Let me pray for us as we close. God, thank you for all the ways you're blessing us. Thank you for the opportunity to praise you and to know that you are with us. And Lord, help us to. Uh, to look for those ways that we can praise you, to celebrate all the ways you are at work in our world. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, and we thank you for what you're doing in our lives, in our church, in our community. Help us to be your people. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you next week.